Statistics and Excel exponential distribution create and compare sample line weighting data to exponential distribution. Get ready, taking a deep breath, holding it in for 10 seconds, looking forward to a smooth, soothing Excel. Here we are in Excel. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, uh, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us but but that's okay whatever because our merchandise is is better than their stupid stuff anyways like our trust me i'm an accountant product line yeah it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant because apparently we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep complex and nuanced questions if you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. So if you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we'll basically build this from a blank worksheet. But if you do have access, there's three tabs down below. Example, practice blank. Example, in essence, answer key. Practice tab, having pre-formatted cells so you can get to the heart of the practice problem. The blank tab, blank worksheet so we can practice formatting the sales within Excel as we work through the practice problem. Let's go to the example tab to get an idea of what we will be doing, looking at an exponential distribution situation within business scenarios that often deals with line weighting situations as we will be working here. Oftentimes, it's related to a Poisson distribution that we've seen in prior presentations. Poisson distributions typically asking a question such as, What's the likelihood for a certain number of customers to be arriving within a certain time interval, such as minutes uh, or seconds? Whereas the exponential distribution kind of flips the question a bit and is asking, what's the interval of time that is going to be passing before between customers? So what we would like to do this time is try to simulate a situation where we're going out there and we're just basically have our stopwatch and we're marking down the time that is passing between consecutive customers. And if it's following up a, a, a exponential distribution, then we'll be able to plot it out and possibly recognize that and compare that then to the smooth exponential distribution curve to try to get a better intuitive understanding of what is actually happening here. All right, let's go to the blank tab uh, and, and start this out. We're gonna say that first we'll, we'll say that the mean, well, let's format the worksheet. Don't get ahead of yourself. Format the worksheet. We'll hit the triangle up top, right click on the worksheet and format the entire worksheet. Currency, negative numbers bracketed and red, no dollar sign. We'll get rid of the decimals for now add them as we need them okay i'm going to embolden the entire sheet home tab font group emboldened i have been emboldened to proceed all right here we go no fear now because we've been emboldened so we have the mean arrival rate and this is going to be in hours so the mean arrival uh, rate meaning the average arrival rate we're going to imagine is 10 meaning we're imagining that on average, 10 people arrive an hour. Now, again, when we're thinking about the number of people that arrive in a time interval, that may follow a Poisson distribution. And if it does, then we would think that the intervals between arrivals would typically be following the exponential distribution, all right? So then we could say that the mean arrival rate in minutes then if that if it's 10 uh, in an hour, the mean arrival in minutes is going to be equal to 10 divided by 60. I'm going to add some decimals. So we're going to say home tab, number group, adding some decimals. So we have about uh, 0.166 per people arriving uh, per minute now. Okay, so then and so obviously we have to be thinking about what kind of time interval which would be best used for whatever we're working with hours minutes seconds and so we can say then the inter uh, arrival time in hours so the the inter arrival time 
between how long does it take uh, between arrivals would be equal to one divided by 10. So if we think about in hours, how long does it take for people to be showing up? We're gonna say home tab font group, add some decimals, uh, 0.1 hours, right? So it's probably easier to see this in minutes. So if I say the inter arrival time in minutes, we're gonna say, well, how many people sh show up? Uh, uh, point one six six. I'm sorry, one. Let's say one minute divided by the average people that arrive in a minute. Point one six six six, and we'll say enter. So that comes out to about exactly six, I think. Home tab number, adding some decimals, exactly six. Okay, so so now that we have, let's try to see if we can simulate this data as though we're we're out there with our stopwatch and trying to and trying to see how many people are showing up uh, and how long it takes between each person showing up. So I'm going to make a skinny C here. I'm going to say that the customer and we'll try to count the number of customers that come in, right? So let's say let's just say we do this for like 300 customers, let's say. So I'm going to say then we have one, two. I'm going to select those two and copy it down to 300. I'm just going to say copy it down to 300. And we're just watching these customers uh, come in to pick up our data. I just made up 300 as a random number. So I'm going down to 300. You could use the sequence fill to fill that in if you so choose. And then we have the... Let's call it the inter inter arrival times. I'm going to make this a header format, selecting these two, go into the home tab, alignment, wrapping the text, centering it, make it black and white. Okay, so now we're going to use a, a formula. Now, to simulate this, this data, it's a little bit of a complex formula. I can't just use a random generator. And we don't have the same kind of a uh, random generator we saw with the Poisson distribution and the binome with the data analysis. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to make my little random generator here, uh, imagining that we're sitting there and we're simulating uh, us uh, checking out how many people are showing up in the interval of time between people showing up, right? We're just collecting our data. So that's gonna be equal to uh, uh, LN, which is gonna be the natural logarithm. So we have to, so don't, we're not gonna be using a lot of calculus here, but we need that for our random generation. And then I'm gonna say one minus the random, now we're gonna enter our random generation number embedded. And then we're gonna say, close that up. And I'm going to divide that by then the, uh, which one is it? It's going to be the mean arrival rate. Let's do it in minutes here. And then I want this B2 to not move when I copy it down. So I'm going to select F4 on the keyboard, dollar sign before the B and the 2, and then close it up. So it's a little bit of a complicated formula there. Uh, but again, this is kind of our random number generator tool to to simulate us out there trying to with our stopwatch trying to see the intervals between customers right so if i hit enter uh and there, there it goes so i'm going to add some decimals home tab number group decimals decimalizing it i want it to be positive so I'm going to double click on it again. And before the before the whole thing, I'm just going to put a negative, which will basically multiply the whole thing times negative one, enter. And so now we get a positive number. I'm going to double click the fill handle to just copy it down. And there we have it. So now we've got our, our randomly generated numbers simulating us out there, just counting uh, how long it takes the intervals in minutes between customers uh, coming in. Now, if you look at this, notice what kind of happens. This is this is kind of the key to kind of understanding why the curve is this way with a line weighting situation. Notice this first one we have 22, which is quite long, but when but then we had only one 
uh, uh, one minute, five minutes, seven minute, one minute, uh, less than a minute, three minutes, five minutes, one minute, and then eight minutes fairly long. So notice you have a what ends up happening with these line waiting situations is you you have some of these long waiting situations uh, intermixed with with a lot of of shorter wait situations is often what you end up with and that's what's going to give us our our common exponential kind of uh, of curve that will be that we will be generating so notice this is going to regenerate because i have that random number generator so what i want to do is copy this whole thing because this is my generator and then paste it one two three so it's not going to keep on trying to re regenerate the numbers so i'm going to put my cursor on d and e i'm going to right click and copy those and then I'm gonna paste them in column G, right click, but paste it one, two, three. So we just have the numbers. I can also paste the formula, I mean the format without the formulas, right click and paste the formatting so that I get those header formatting. I'll make column F a little bit skinnier. So there we have that. I'll make column C a little skinnier. And then if I took the average of these arrival times, I should get to around, you know, that six over here. So I'm going to say to, so I'm going to say then my, my average or my mean of my data is going to be equal to the average brackets. I'm going to put my cursor here, control shift down, taking the whole average enter. And if I add some decimals, home tab, number group. So you can see that the, that the average we get is around six, although it's kind of all over the place. And we have some of those high numbers and a lot of, and a lot of the lower numbers, right? We got this 2681 up here and then a lot of these uh, lower numbers. That's often kind of the case you'll have in like a line waiting type of situation. So now let, let's, let's, uh, we, we could take a histogram of this and see what it would look like. So if I, for example, take my, my data here, control shift down, and I'm, I'm gonna then control backspace and go back to the top, and I insert, say, charts and a histogram. Now we've got our, our chart. I'm gonna call the chart equal to enter arrival times, let's say, or I, it won't let me do it this way in a histogram. Enter arrival times so i let it i let it choose the boxes down below so we've got you know 0.02 to 3.02 and uh 3.02 to 6 and so on and so forth and you can see what we end up having here is that most most of them are are grouped up in the lower range not a whole lot of wait time but we have a few that are way out here at 21 and 24 minutes and some that are even further out, which, which is kind of what's, so that's kind of given us our characteristic exponential distribution look here. So that's you, and if we look at this, we're saying how that looks kind of like an exponential uh, curve. So let's, let's then try to do this with bends this time. So I'm gonna make column I a little bit skinnier and let's put our bends together and do this in a manual way. And I'm going to use our frequency to do that. And this is going to be the frequency. Let's make these two home tab, font group, black, uh, white. Let's put, let's wrap it. Let's center it. And let's say that our bends are going to go up to like, to like, I don't know, let's say, uh, let's say 35. So I'm gonna say from uh, bins of zero, one, two, I'm gonna copy this down to, let's say 35. Let's go to 40, let's go to 40. We'll take the bins up to 40. So, and then we'll, and then I'm gonna do my frequency. Now I'm trying to see how many times and this and this data set, these numbers are showing up, but notice they're not even. So I want to use a frequency, which is going to kind of simulate the the bins, the bins uh, up to a certain. It has a range to it, right? So I'm going to use my equals frequency tab. The data array that I want to be picking up is going to be then 
uh, this data, control shift down, and then control backspace to get back up, and then comma, and the bends that I want are these bends. So control shift down and control backspace to get back up, and there's my, my spill array frequency, enter, and so there we have it. So now we're gonna say that that one, and this is going up to and uh, including one, I believe we've talked about the bends, you know, how these happen, how these work in a prior presentation. We have 51 there. Uh, and then two, we've got the 30, and then three, we've got the 31, and uh, so on and so forth. Now I can also look at the, let's take a look at the, to let's total these bends up. So if I go down to the bottom, I wanna get rid of this last bend down here. So I'm gonna go into this one and say, take that to 41, get rid of that last bend. And then I'm gonna say the total is gonna be alt equals, summing that up, gets to 300. That makes sense because I, I had a count of 300 here. So it looks like it at least picked up all the numbers. So that's good. So then we're gonna say one more column, which I'm gonna call it the percent of the total. And I'm gonna make that black, white, wrap it, center it, and I'm gonna take each of these results, the zero divided by the total down here, the, the uh, 300, I'm gonna F4, absolute reference, dollar sign before the K and the 43, that second number so I can copy it down, enter, and then percentify it, number group, percentify, add a couple decimals, fill handle, double click it down. So now we've got the percents and the total then should add up to 100. I'm gonna delete this to give me my check number, which shouldn't just be 300 divided by 300, but alt enter, summing it up. And so that adds up then to uh, 100. So, so then of course I can do my frequency distribution and make a, uh, make a chart based on this, right? I can take this if I so choose and say we're going to then pick that up and then insert this time i'm going to do a bar chart charts bar, bar chart, chart boom Boop. and there's our uh frequency i'm going to do what we typically do and go to my data on the bar charts and adjust the columns to pick up our columns from zero to 40 and enter and so there's our frequency. You, get, you can see you have a similar, you have a, a, a similar look to what we had up top, except, except the bends are different, right? We've, we've, we have bends of, uh, of the, the numbers here, whereas the bends here are 0.02 to 0.03 and so on. So if I wanna compare like to like, then I could adjust this histogram and I can just I could adjust the bends on it. So if I go into the bends, for example, this is from our actual data. You'll recall this came from our, our actual data. If I adjust the bends on the histogram to have an interval of uh, one, so I'll click on the bends and we're gonna go here and then I'm gonna go to my bend width and change it from, from three to one and so there we go and now you've got something that's capping out at the 50 right and these two look a little bit more similar now okay so okay so now we're saying okay that looks kind of like a, an exponential distribution situation so now i could say well what if i used my to make predictions into the future then I can use my exponential uh, function to get a nice smooth curve that would be easier to use to make predictions with, right? So I'm gonna do this again. I'm gonna say this, but now I'm not gonna use my actual data, but I'm gonna try to make my curve. So X equals arrivals, arrivals, arrivals during one minute. It's gonna be my header. And then I'm going to say this is x, p of x, expone 
function that we'll do. Let's start there. I'm going to select these two, Home tab, and then we're going to go to uh, the font group, black, white, wrap it, center it. So, so there we have it. I'm going to make this go from uh, 0 down to 40, 0, 1, 2. Copy that down to 40, just like we did before, 40. And boom. And then I'm going to use my, my expone.dis. So this is going to be expone equals expone.dist. And I'm going to say the X is going to be a spill function again. So I'm going to put my cursor on that zero control shift down, selecting the entire thing, control backspace back up to the top comma Lambda is going to be one divided by going to, to the left. We want to pick up that six, which is the enter arrival time in minutes comma. And then I'm going to scroll to the right just so we can see what we're doing here. We're looking, should it be cumulative or not? We do not want it to be cumulative. Therefore, we're going to say uh, false or we can put a zero, close it up, enter, spills it down, selecting the whole column of zero, home tab, number group, and I'll percentify it, adding a couple decimals. And, and so there, uh, so there we have it. Now, if we compare that to the bins, for example, uh, if I had uh, the one here on the bins, we came out to with our actual data, 17 versus you know 14 on the two, the actual data was 10 versus the 11, the actual data was three versus uh, the 10, 11, and so on and so forth. So I can then, I can graph this we could say, okay, let's go ahead and graph this, picking this up. And we're going to say, pick that up down to here and insert. And uh, we could do another one like this again. I can say, let's do that. And so now we've got that smooth graph using our font. Let's keep it up here for now. We've got that graph. And... I will then change the, the X's to be the, my own. So I'm going to go from 0 to 40. So there we have that. Okay. So that looks good. And then we might want to try to put on top of that uh, the actual data just to compare and contrast. So let's go to the data again. I'm going to go to the Edit tab. Hold on, not Edit. Add. And I'm going to also be putting in place the percent of the total. And it's going to be the series of this series of data. And we'll say, OK, boom, and OK, and OK. So you can see them plotted kind of on top of each other there. If I pull this down, let's pull it down somewhere so it's not on top of everything else. And so there's kind of our our comparison. We might want a key on the right, a legend, a legend. I'm already a legend, man. Okay, calm down. So you could see, so you could see, you know, the relationship basically on top of that. So clearly, in this case, the exponential distribution uh, has some predictive predictive power. So we might want to use that for projections in the future because it looks like it's following that uh, that pattern. So that's the general idea. Let's clean this thing up. Uh, let's make this whole thing blue and bordered. Home tab font group. I'm going to make it bordered and then drop down on the bucket. That blue, if you don't have it, more colors. Color wheel, light blue. I'm going to select these two. Control shift down. Border blue. These two, control shift down border blue and then these three uh hold on three control shift down border blue and then these two control shift down border blue let's do it oh not white with the oh man you messed it all up hold on a second that needs to be black and then i can review it spell checky 
arrivals arrive x oh that's no not a problem whatever get out of here all right we can make some of these a little skinnier maybe the eye can be skinnier look how skinny eye is that should be way skinnier there's no need for a wide cell to put a skinny eye in okay 